father died. Just a year ago, on this very day, the 5th of May, your birthday, Irina. It was very cold. Snow was falling. I felt as though I should not live through it. You lay fainting as though you were dead. But now, a year has passed, and we can think of it calmly. You are already in a white dress. Your face is shining. The clock was striking then, too. I remember the band playing and the firing at the cemetery as they carried the coffin. Even though he was a general in command of a brigade, yet there weren't many people there. It's true. It was raining, heavy rain and snow. Why think about it? Yes. Today, it's warm. We can leave the windows open. But the birches are not in leaf yet. When Father came here with us from Moscow 11 years ago, I remember that at this time in Moscow, at the beginning of May, everything was already in flower. It was warm and everything was bathed in sunshine. It's 11 years ago and yet I remember it all as though we had left it yesterday. Oh dear, I woke up this morning. I saw a blaze of sunshine. I saw the spring and my heart was filled with joy. I had a passionate longing to be back at home again. Like hell it is. Of course it's not. It's not, it's not Don't hum, Masha. How can you? Being all day at school and then at my lessons till the evening gives me a perpetual headache and thoughts as gloomy as though I were old. And really, these four years that I have been at the high school have drained my strength and my youth. And only one yearning grows stronger and stronger. To go to Moscow, to sell the house, to get rid of everything here and to go to Moscow. Yes, to Moscow and quickly. Andre will be a professor so he won't live here anyhow. The only one who's going to be here is poor Masha. Masha will come and spend the whole summer in Moscow every year. I love it. And I hope it all works out. How fine it is today. When I woke up this morning, I remembered that it was my birthday and at once I felt joyful. That's when my mother was alive. And I was filled by such thoughts. Such wonderful thoughts. You are radiant today and looking lovelier than <laughs> usual. Masha is lovely too. <laughs> Andre would be good looking, but he has grown too thin. And I have grown older, I suppose, because I get so cross with those kids at school. But now, today, I am free. I'm at home, my head doesn't ache, and I feel younger than yesterday. I'm only 28. It's all quite right. It's all from God. Don't talk such nonsense. I'm so sick of listening to you. Oh, I forgot to tell you. You will receive a visit today from Virginia. He's the new commander of our battery. Well, I'll be delighted. Is he old? No, not particularly. 40, 45 at the most. He seems to be a nice fellow. He's not stupid, that's for sure. Only he talks a lot. Is he interesting? Yes, he's all right. He has a wife and two little girls. It's his second wife. Anyway, he's going around telling everyone that he has a wife and two little girls. I'm sure he'll tell you, too. His wife seems a bit crazy. She wears her hair in two long braids like a little girl. Always talks in affected tone. She drinks and frequently attempts to commit suicide. <laughs> evidently to annoy her husband. Oh, I would have left a woman like that years ago, but he puts up with her and merely complains. <laughs> with one hand, I can only lift 50 pounds. But with two hands, I can lift 100 or even 150 pounds. Well, from that I conclude that two men are not only twice, but three times as strong as one man. Or even more. Chernobyl. 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 Ah. For falling hair, two ounces of naphthalene, a half bottle of alcohol, to be dissolved and used daily, I must make a note of that. <laughs> <sighs> My dear Ivan Romanich, tell me why it is that I am so happy today. What is it, my child, my joy? It's as if there's a great blue sky above me and big white birds are flying above it. Oh, why is it? Why am I so happy? When I woke up this morning, I got up and washed. It suddenly seemed to me as though everything in my life was clear and I knew how I ought to live. My dear Ivan Romanich, I know all about it. I will wake up and work 
at the sweat of my brow and all the purpose and meaning of my life, my happiness, my ecstasies, it'll lie in that alone. And how delightful it would be to get up at dawn and work in a factory or, or teach children or, or even be a truck driver. <laughs> and to say nothing of human beings, it would be better to be an ox, better to be a humble horse than a teenager that lies in bed until 12 and drinks vodka in bed and watches TV for two hours. It's awful. And just as people crave water in hot weather, I have a craving for work. And if I don't get up and work, then you give me up as a friend, my dear Ivan Romanov. I'll give you up. I'll give you up. <laughs> Father trained us to get up at 7 o'clock. Now, Irina wakes at 7 and lies in bed at least till 9, thinking about things, and she looks so serious. You are so <laughs> used to thinking of me as a child and are surprised when I look serious. I am 20. Yes, yes, the yearning for work. Oh, God, how well I understand it. See, I, I've never worked in my life. I was born in cold, idle Leningrad in a family that had no cares of any kind. I remember when I came home from the military school, my mother used to pull off my boots for me. And I used to be troublesome, oh yes, but my mother looked at me with reverential awe and she was surprised when other people didn't do the same. I was shielded from physical work. But I doubt if they have succeeded in shielding me completely. Oh, I doubt it. You see, the time is at hand. An avalanche is moving down upon us. A major clearing storm is coming in and will soon blow all this drinking, the laziness, the indifference, the distaste for work, the rotten boredom out of our society. And I will work. And in another, oh, 25 or 30 years, everyone will work. Everyone. I am not going to work. Well, and you don't count. In another 25 years, you won't be here, thank God. In two or three years, uh, you'll kick the bucket, or I shall lose my temper and stick my knife right through your heart. <laughs> my angel. In fact, uh, I have never done anything at all. I uh, haven't worked since I left university. I've never read a book. I read only newspapers. Well, I can tell you, for instance, from this paper, that there is such a man as uh, Yevtushenko. But what he wrote... I have no idea. God only knows. Uh, I'm waiting for someone who's supposed to be coming and delivering something. I shall go down, and uh, I'll be back in a minute, so don't go away anyway. He's got something up his sleeve. <laughs> oh, yes, he left with a solemn face. Evidently, he's going to bring you a present. What a nuisance. <laughs> yes, it's awful. He's always doing something silly. By the seashore, an oak tree green. Upon that oak, a chain of gold. Upon that oak, a chain of gold. Hmm. You're not very cheerful today, Masha. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Where are you going? Mm -hmm. Home. Home? Walk out on a birthday party? Who cares? I'll come back in the evening. Oh, my darling. Once again, I wish you well and happy. In old days, when Father was alive, we always had 30 or 40 officers here on birthdays. It was noisy, blingy with caviar or vodka, but today there's only a man and a half, and it's as quiet as the desert. <laughs> I'll go. I've got the blues today. I'm feeling glum today, so don't you mind what I'm saying? We'll talk some other time, so for now, goodbye, my darling. I'm going. You're so tiresome, Masha. I understand you, Masha. <laughs> When a man philosophizes, you get philosophy, but when a woman philosophizes, or to do it, you get piles and piles of cow manure. What do you mean to say by that, you chauvinist pig? Nothing. He had not time to say a laugh before the bear was on his back. Oh, please stop crying, Olga. Come along, come along. Oh, it's all right, your feet are clean. Ah, from the, the party <clears throat> committee, from Mikhail Ivanich Pratapop of a cake. <laughs> Thanks. Thank him for me. What? Thank him for me. Nanny darling, get him something to eat. Fair pond. Go along. She will get you a sandwich to eat. Eh? Come along. Oh, for goodness sake. I don't like that protopopo, that Mikhail Potapich or Ivanich. You shouldn't have invited him. I didn't invite him. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
an antique samovar. <laughs> How awful! Okay. Oh. Ivan Romanich, what are you thinking about? <laughs> my girls, my darling girls, you are, are, are all that I, I have. You're my most precious treasures on earth. I am nearly 60. I'm an old man, alone in the world, a useless old man. I, there's nothing good in me except my love for you, and if it hadn't been for you, I'd been dead long ago. My darling, my sweet girl, I have known you from a baby. I carried you in my arms. I loved your dear mother. I know, but why such expensive presents? Expensive presents? Oh. Get out of here! Expensive presents! Oh. My dears, my dears, a, a, a colonel has come, a stranger. He's taking his overcoat off. Children, he's coming in here. You, uh, you must be nice and polite now. It's for Shin, oh, I suppose. Almost lunchtime. Oh. Oh, Lieutenant Colonel Vershinian. How glad I am! How glad I am! But there are three of you, sisters. I remember three little girls. I don't remember your faces, but I remember that your father, General Prozorov, had three little girls. That I remember perfectly. I saw them with my own eyes. How time passes. Oh, Lord, how it passes. Alexander Ignatiev, you just come from Moscow. From Moscow? You've come all the way from Moscow? Yes. Your father was a general there, and I was an officer in the same brigade. Your face now, I seem to remember. I don't remember you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, come. It seems that Lieutenant Colonel Vershinian has come all the way from Moscow. So you are Olga Sergeyevna, the eldest. And you are Maria. And you are Irina, the youngest. You came from Moscow. Yes, yes, I studied in Moscow. I began my service there. I served there for years, and at last I was transferred here, as you see. I don't remember you exactly. I, I only remember you were three sisters. I remember your father. If I shut my eyes, I can see him as if he were alive. I used to visit you in Moscow. Ah, I thought I remembered everyone, but now all at once yes. I can't... My name is Alexander Ignatyevich. Alexander Ignatyevich, and you've come all the way from Moscow. <laughs> what a surprise. We're going to move there, you know. Oh. Yes, we'll be there by autumn. It's our native town. We were born there. Yes. On old Basmania Street. <laughs> to see someone so unexpectedly from our old town. Now I remember you. Do you remember, Olya? They used to talk of the lovesick major. You were a lieutenant at that time, and... You were in love with some woman, and for some reason they called you Major to tease yes, you. Yes, yes, the lovesick Major, that was it. But you had no mustache then. Oh, how much older you look. <laughs> how much older. Yes, when I was the lovesick Major, I was young and in love. Now it's very different. But you don't have a single gray hair. You may have grown older, but you are not old. Now, I'm already 45. <laughs> well, is it long since you left Moscow? Eleven years. But Masha... Why are you crying, you foolish girl? I start to cry too. I'm all right. And what street did you live in? An old Basmania. <laughs> That's where we live too. Yes. At one time I lived on Niemetska Street. I used to go from there to the Red Square. There's a gloomy looking bridge on the way where the water roars underneath. It makes a lonely man feel melancholy. But here, what a broad, splendid river, a marvelous river. <laughs> yes, but it's cold. It's cold here and there are mosquitoes in the summer. How can you? You have such a splendid, healthy, rushing climate here in Siberia. Forest, river, birches, charming, modest birches. I love them better than any other tree. It's nice to live here. There's only one strange thing. There is no civilian airport nearby, and no one knows why. I know why. Because if there was one, everyone would fly away from here. <laughs> Paris, London, Buenos Aires. Vasily, Vasilievich, she's fond of his jokes. Now I recall you two, I remember. I knew your mother. She was a fine woman. God bless her soul. Yes, mother is buried in Moscow. In the Novo de Vice. Can you believe it? I'm already beginning to forget her face. No one will remember us either. They'll forget us. Yes, they'll forget us. Such is our fate. There is no helping it. What seems to us serious, significant, very important, will one day be forgotten or seem totally unimportant. And it's curious, we can't exactly know what will be considered great and important and what will seem petty and ridiculous. Didn't the discoveries of Copernicus, or Columbus, let's say, seem useless and ridiculous at first, while the nonsensical writings of some fool seem true? And it may be that our present life, which we have accepted, will in time seem strange, inconvenient, stupid, unclean, perhaps even sinful. Oh, who knows, who knows? Perhaps our age will be called the Great One and remembered with respect. 
See, we have no more gulags, no torture chambers, fewer executions. But at the same time, how much suffering? Aaron wants to talk about ideas. Vasily Vasilievich, I ask you to leave me alone. It gets boring after a while. Anyway, the suffering which one observes or so much of it, it does indicate, however, that society has reached such a low moral level. Yes, yes, of course. Well, you said well, just now, Aaron Lvovich, that our age will be considered great. But you know, people are small all the same. I mean, look how small I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's Andre playing our brother. Yes, Andre's going to be a professor. Our father was a military man, but he's gone in for the scholarly career. It was father's wish. We've been teasing him today. We think he's a little in love. Uh, yes, with some woman who's living upstairs. And she'll come in today, most likely. Now you should see the way she dresses. It's not that her clothes are merely ugly or out of fashion. They're simply pitiful. <laughs> her skirts are so short that... Well, they look rather like a larger belt, and her tops are always low-cut. Andre's not in love with her. I refuse to believe that. He has some taste after all. He's just having fun, teasing us, playing the fool. I heard yesterday that she is to be married to Protopopo, the party chairman of our district. And a very good thing, I think, too. <laughs> Andre, dear, come here for a minute, please. Andre! This is my brother, Andrei Sergeyevich. My name is Rishin. And mine is Prozorov. So you're our new commander? <laughs> Can you believe Alexander Ignatievich comes from Moscow? Really? Well, then I must congratulate you. My sisters won't be leaving you in peace. Uh, I've had time to bore your sisters already. Look at what a pretty picture frame Andrei has made for me today. It is a thing. Yes, and he made the one above the piano over there as well. He is a scholar, and he plays the piano, and he makes all sorts of things with a friend saw. In fact, he's good at everything he does. Andre, don't go. That's the way he is. He is so bashful. Always tries to run away. Come here. Oh, come, come. You leave me alone, please. Oh, how funny he is. Alexander Ignatievich used to be called a lovesick major at one time, and he wasn't a bit offended. Not in the least. And I'd like to call you the lovesick major. Or the lovesick <laughs> professor. <laughs> he is in love. Andrusha is, is in love. Bravo, <laughs> bravo. Andrusha is in love. <laughs> oh, didn't make you create our hearts for <laughs> All right, all right, that's enough, that's enough. I haven't slept all night, and this morning I don't feel quite myself, as they say. I was up until 4 o'clock in the morning reading, which is more than you can say for yourself. <laughs> and by the time I tried to go to bed, it was no use. I kept thinking of one thing after the other, and, and oh, it gets light so damn early. The sun simply pours into my bedroom. And to think that I've been meaning to translate a book from the English while I'm here during the summer. You read English, then? Oh, yes. Our Father, God bless him, forced on all of us a good education. It's funny, really. They say, after his death, I've grown too skinny. Probably because I don't sleep. Anyway, thanks to our Father, we all know English. And French. And German. And Irina knows Italian, but at what price? Yes, to know three languages in this town is an unnecessary luxury. Not even a luxury, but an unnecessary encumbrance. Like a sixth finger. We know a great deal that's unnecessary. What next? You know a great deal that's unnecessary. I don't think there can be a town so dull and dismal that educated and intelligent people are unnecessary in it. Let's suppose that of the 20,000 people living in this town, which is of course uncultured and behind the times, there are only the three of you. What goes without saying, you cannot conquer the mass of darkness around you. Little by little as you go on living, life will get the best of you. But it won't, you won't be left without a trace. People like you, perhaps there will be six, then 12. And after generations and more and more, life will become imaginably beautiful, unimaginably beautiful in two or three hundred years. And man needs such a life, though he hasn't got it yet. He must have a, a presentiment of it, uh, expect it, dream of it, prepare for it. And for that, he must see and know more than his father and grandfather. And you complain of knowing a great deal that's unnecessary. I'll stay for lunch. <laughs> Someone should really write all of that down. You say that after many years, life on Earth will be beautiful and marvelous. Yes, that's true, that's true. But you see, in order to have any share in it now, however far off, we, we must prepare for it. We must be working. Well, yes, yes. What flowers you have. And delightful rooms. I envy you. I've been moving all my life from one wretched apartment to another, with nothing more than two chairs and a sofa and central heating that didn't work. <laughs> what I've been lacking all my life is just such flowers. Ah, but there is no use thinking well, of it. 
Yes, we must work. We must work. Oh, no doubt you think the Jew is getting sentimental. But on my honor, I am Russian and I, I, I can't even speak Hebrew. You see, Olga, my, my father belonged to the Orthodox Church. I often think, what if you were to begin life all over again, knowing what you're doing? If one life already lived were a rough sketch, so to speak, and the second were the final copy, then I think everyone would try at least not to repeat himself anyway. He would live in a house like this with great light and lots of flowers. I have a wife and two little girls. My wife is in poor health and so on and so on. But if I were to marry, if I were to live over again, I would not marry. No. Dear sister, <laughs> allow me to congratulate you on your birthday. And with all my heart, to wish you good health and everything else one can desire for a girl your age. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it's a book, a yearbook, the history of our school on its 50th anniversary, written by myself. An insignificant little book written because I had nothing to do, but still you can read it. <laughs> Good day, friend. My name is Kaligan, teacher here. In that book, head of the school party committee. Uh. In that book, you'll find a list of all the distinguished people that finished their studies in our school in the last 50 years. Yes, but you gave me a copy of this exact book last Christmas. Uh, <laughs> impossible. Well, if that's the case, give it back to me. Uh, better yet, give it to the Colonel, please. <laughs> Accept it, Colonel. Mm. Someday when you're bored, you can read it. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm very glad to have met you. Oh, you are going. No, no, no. Please no. stay with us for lunch, please. I'm sorry. Please I seem to have intruded on a birthday party. I didn't know and well, I haven't even congratulated you yet. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today is Sunday, a day of rest. Let's all rest and enjoy ourselves, each in accordance with his age and position. The carpets should be taken up for the summer and put away till the winter. Lavender or Nopheline. Romans were healthy because they knew how to work and they knew how to rest. They had men sana and corpore sano. Their lives were molded into a certain framework. Our chairman of the school board says the most important thing in every life is his framework. What loses his framework comes to an end. <laughs> and it's the same in our everyday life. Oh, Marsha loves me. Ooh, my wife loves me. The window curtains, too, ought to be put away together with the carpets. Today I feel cheerful and in the best of spirits. Yes, Marsha, at four o'clock this afternoon, we have to be at the principal's house. Oh. A picnic has been arranged for the teachers and the families. I'm not going. Dear Marsha, why not? We'll talk about it afterwards. we we'll discuss this. Very well, I'll go. Only leave me alone, please. And then we shall spend the evening at the principal's house. In spite of his delicate health, the man tries most of all to be sociable. He's an excellent, noble personality. Splendid man. Yesterday, after the meeting, he said to me, Tired. <gasps> Your clock is seven minutes fast. My watch is quartz. Yes, he said. I'm tired. <laughs> Come to the table, please. We have pierogi. Oh, Olga. Dear Olga. Oh, yes. Yesterday I worked from early morning till 11 o'clock at night grading tests and was tired. <clears throat> but today, I feel cheerful. Pierogies, my dear. Only mind you don't drink, do you hear? It's bad for you to drink. Come on, my good girl, that's a thing of the past. I haven't been really drunk in two years. Oh, come on. What difference does it make? Anyway, don't you dare drink. Don't dare. Well, to hell with it if I'm going to be bored an entire evening at the principal's office. I wouldn't go there if I were you. It's very simple. Just don't go, my oh, love. Oh, yes, don't go. 
damn life insufferable. Come, come. Burr, 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 burr. I went to the office to give a seat to stop it. Your health, Colonel. I'm a teacher and part of the family here. Marsha's husband. He's very kind, really. Very kind. I'll have some of this Starka. To your health. I'm so happy with all of you. I am sorry that Marsha's so depressed today. She was married at 18, thinking that he was the most intelligent of men, and it's not the same now. <laughs> he is the kindest, but he's not necessarily the smartest. Andre, come on! Yes, I'm coming. Nothing? I don't like that Solioni of yours. I'm afraid of him and he says such stupid things. Oh, he's a strange man. I'm sorry. So sorry for him and annoyed by him, but more sorry. I think he's shy. It, you see, when there's just the two of us, he's, he's very intelligent, very, very friendly, but in the company, he's rude. He's such a bully. Don't go yet. Let me be with you. What are you thinking about? You're only 20, I'm not yet 30. How many years have we got before us? A long, long chain of days full of my love for you. Aaron, please don't talk to me about love. I'm actually craving for life, for struggle, for work. It's, this craving is mingled in my soul with my love for you. Irina, just because you're beautiful, it seems to me that life too is beautiful. Tell me, what are you thinking about? You say that life is beautiful, but what if it only seems so? Life for us three sisters hasn't been beautiful yet. If anything, we've been stifled by it as plants are choked by weeds, and I'll start to cry, and I mustn't cry. <laughs> I must work. I must work. The reason that we are so depressed and take such a gloomy view on life is because we know nothing of They're sitting work. down to lunch already. I'm late. I think my hair looks all right. Dear Arena Sergeyevna, I congratulate you. You have such a lot of visitors. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, I really feel embarrassed. Oh, good day, Lieutenant. Well, here's Natalia Ivanovna. How are you, my dear? Bonjour. Uh, did, I, did I come at the wrong time? Oh, nonsense. It's just our family and friends. <laughs> you are wearing a green top. My dear, that doesn't match. Why, is that a mistake? No, it's just that it doesn't go with that skirt, and oh, it looks wrong. Really? But it, it's not really green, it's really more turquoise. I wish you a good fiancé, Irina. It's time for you to think of getting married. <laughs> and, uh, Natalia Ivanovna, I hope we'll hear of your engagement soon, too. Natalia Ivanovna has a suitor already. <laughs> And she speaks wonderful French. I'd like a glass of vodka, too. <laughs> you only live once, what the hell? You deserve a bad mark for conduct. Mm. Oh, nice to snuff. What's it made of? Cockroaches! Oh, <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> this evening, tonight, we are going to have roast turkey and rhubarb pie for dinner. Thank God I am at home all day and will be at home in the evening. Friends, why don't you come back this evening? May I come as well? Yes, yeah. please do. Well, they don't stand on ceremony here. All you need is love. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, that's enough. At lunch? Yep. Yes, they're at lunch already. <laughs> oh, wait, one minute, please. Just one minute. I would like to take a photo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ready? One? Wait, wait, wait another minute. Wait another minute. Two! <laughs> yes, I, I think I'm done for now. Thank you. <laughs> My congratulations. Oh. I wish you everything. The weather is delightful. Simply magnificent. I was out for a walk all morning with the high school boys. I teach them soccer. Smile, Irina Sergeyevna. You can move now. <laughs> oh, oh, and, 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 and here is an old top for you, by the way. <laughs> It has a wonderful noise. <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> it's lovely. Thank you. <laughs> By the seashore, an oak tree green, upon that oak a chain of gold. Why do I keep saying that? That phrase has been haunting me all day. Thirteen at table. Surely you don't put words on such superstitions. If there's thirteen at table, that means someone present is in love. <coughs> By any chance, <coughs> it's not you, Ivan Romanich. <laughs> now, I'm an old cynic, but... Natalia Ivanovna is blushing. Oh. I can't imagine why. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, don't take any notice of them. I'm so ashamed. I don't know what's wrong with me that they make fun of me. I know I shouldn't have left the table like that, but I can't help it. I can't. Natasha, please, I implore you, don't be so upset. I assure you they're only joking. They do it in all kindness. They really are lovely, warm-hearted people. They're just a bit drunk. <laughs> here, come here to the window. There's more light here. I'm so unaccustomed to society. Oh, Natasha, lovely, marvelous youth, don't be so distressed. Believe me, trust me, I am so happy. My soul is full of love and joy. Why? Oh, they can't hear us, they can't. Why, I love you, Natasha. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. oh, I don't know what to do. Uh, Natasha, my sweet, sweet pure one. Be my wife. <laughs> Be my wife. I, I love you. I love you as I've never loved anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Andrushka, what are you doing? Reading? Oh, never mind. I only wanted to know if the light was off. What is, what is it, Natasha? <laughs> I was just checking to see if the light was off. It's carnival. There's so much noise in the street. You always have to be on the lookout in case something goes wrong. Well, last night at 12 o'clock, I was walking through the dining room and the light was on. I couldn't figure out who left it on. Well, what time is it? Quarter past eight. Oh, and Olga and Arena aren't in yet. They haven't come in. They're still at work, poor dears. Olga's at a faculty meeting and Arena at the post office. Oh, I was telling your sister this morning, take care of yourself, Arena, darling. Oh, but she won't listen. <laughs> Quarter past eight, you say? I'm afraid our Bobic is not at all well. Why is he so cold? Yesterday he was feverish, and today he's cold all over. I'm so scared. Natasha, it's all right. I'm sure the boy's quite well. Oh, well, well, we better be careful about his food intake anyways. I'm scared. Oh, and I'm told that the mummers are coming tonight around 9 o'clock for carnival. Well, it would be better for them not to come, Andrusha. Well, I really don't know. They've been invited, you know. Baby woke up this morning, looked at me, and all at once gave a smile. He knew me. <laughs> Good morning, Bobbit. Good morning, darling, I said to him, and he looked at me and he laughed. <laughs> Children understand. They understand very well. So I will tell them, Andrew, should not to let the carnival party come in. That's really for my sisters to decide, don't you think? It's their house. Yes, for them too. I shall speak with them. They are so kind. <laughs> 
Well, I bought some yogurt for dinner tonight. The doctor says I must eat nothing but yogurt or I'll never lose any weight. <laughs> Bobek is cold. I'm afraid his room is too cold. Maybe we should move him into a different room until the warmer weather comes. <gasps> Irina's room, for instance, is perfect for a nursery. It's dry and the sun shines there all day. I shall speak with her. She might move in with Olga for the time. Oh, she's never at home anyways, except for at night. <laughs> and Drusha Chick, why don't you speak? Huh? Oh, nothing. I was just... Uh, besides, I have nothing to say. Yes, well... Well, what is it that I wanted to tell you? <laughs> oh, yes, Faropont is here from the party committee and is waiting to see you. Oh, good. Send him in, please. Mm -hmm. Ah, good evening, my good man. Let me get the lights. There, that's better. Well, what is it? The chairman has sent a book and a document of some sort here. Oh, yes, thank you. Thanks. Why on earth have you come so late? It's past eight. Eh? Why have you come so late? It's past eight o'clock? Just so. I came before it was dark, but they wouldn't let me see you. Comrade is busy, they told me. Well, of course. If you are busy, I'm in no hurry. Oh, no, no. Eh? Yes. Uh, nothing. Hmm. Let's see. Tomorrow's Friday. We don't have any meetings, but I'll show up to work all the same. It's so dull being at home. Dear old man, how strangely life changes and deceives you. This morning, for instance, I was, well, I was simply bored out of my mind. I had nothing to do. Lord knows I never have anything to do in this house. So I picked up this book old university lectures, and I laughed. Oh, good God. I am the second secretary of the party committee. Me, a member of the local party committee. <laughs> and to think, I dream every night that I'm a professor at the University of Moscow, a distinguished man of whom all Soviet Union is proud. I can't say, sir. I don't understand you. Uh, if you understood me, perhaps I wouldn't talk to you. <laughs> Lord knows I must talk to somebody. My wife never understands me. My sisters I'm somehow afraid of. I'm afraid they will laugh at me or make me feel, I don't know, ashamed. I don't drink, and I'm not very fond of restaurants, but, oh, how I'd enjoy sitting at the Komsomolsky Theater or at the Bolshoi this very moment, dear old man. A contractor was saying at the board the other day that there were some merchants in Moscow eating pancakes. One who ate 40, it seems, died. It was either 40 or 50. I don't remember. In Moscow, you sit in a huge room at a restaurant, and you know no one, and no one knows you, and yet you don't feel a stranger. But here, here you know everyone. Everyone knows you, and yet you are a stranger. A stranger? A stranger and lonely. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> and the same contractor says maybe it's not true that there's a rope stretch Right across Moscow. My heavens, what for? I can't say, sir. The contractor said so. <laughs> That's nonsense. Have you ever even been to Moscow? No, never. It was never meant to be. <laughs> Mind if I go? You can go. Take care of yourself. Take care. Oh, come tomorrow morning and pick up the signed documents. <sighs> yes, it's work. I don't know. Oh. I don't know. Of course habit means a great deal. After father's death, for instance, it was a long time before we could get used to having no orderlies in the house. But apart from habit, I think it's a feeling of justice that makes me say so. Perhaps it's not so in other places, but in our town, the most decent, honorable, well-bred people were all in the army. Uh, <laughs> thirsty, I'd like some tea. Oh, they'll soon be bringing it. Oh, I was married when I was 18. I was afraid of my husband because he was a teacher and I had only just left high school. And in those days, I thought him an awfully intelligent, clever, important person. And now it's just not the same, unfortunately. Yes, I see. Oh, I'm not speaking of my husband. I'm used to him. But yeah. among the townspeople here, there are so many rude, 
Ill-mannered, badly brought up people. Rudeness upsets and distresses me. It makes me unhappy to see a man who is not gentle, not refined, not polite enough. When I have to spend time with the teachers, my husband's colleagues, oh, it makes me quite miserable. Yes, but to my mind, it makes no difference whether they are civilians or military men. They are equally uninteresting, in this town anyway. It's all the same. If one listens to a man of the educated class here, civilian or military, he's worried to death about his family, worried to death about his job, worried to death about his house, his car, his taxes. Ugh. A Russian is peculiarly given to exalted ideas. Yet why is he fall so short in life? Why? Why? Why are his wife and children worried to death about him? Why is he worried to death about them? You're rather depressed this evening. <laughs> Perhaps. I've had no lunch and nothing to eat since morning. My little girl is not well. And when my girls are not well, I am consumed by anxiety. My conscience reproaches me for having given them such a mother. Ugh, if you had seen her today, what a fool she is. We began quarreling at 7 o'clock, and at 9 o'clock I slammed the door and went away. I never talk about it. It's strange. It's only to you I complain. Don't be angry with me. Except for you, I have no one. No one. Uh, what a noise in the stove! Ah, oh, before Father's death, there was a howling in the chimney. There, just like that. Are you superstitious? Yes. That's very strange. You're a wonderful woman. Splendid, wonderful woman. It's dark, but I see the light in your eyes. It's lighter here. I love you. I love you. I love your hair, your eyes, your lips, your body. I see it in my dreams. <laughs> talk to me like that, it makes me laugh even though I feel frightened. Please don't do it again. <laughs> or you may say it, I don't mind, you may say it. You're intoxicated. Uh, talk about something else, I'm coming. Yes, I've got a Jewish name. My name is Lieutenant Aaron Tuzenbach, but I belong to the Orthodox Church and am just as Russian as you. There's very little of the Jewish left in me. Nothing, nothing perhaps, but the patience and obstinacy with which I bore you. I walk you home every evening. I'm so tired. And every day I'll come to the post office and walk you home. I'll do it for ten years. I'll do it for 20 years till you drive me away. Oh, it's you. How are you? Uh, well, mm. I'm home at last. A woman came into the office just now and tried to send a telegraph to her brother that her son had died in Saratov, and she couldn't think of the address. And I was so rude to her just now, told her I had no time to waste. So she sent it, simply to Saratov. It was so stupid. Are the carnival people coming? Yes. I must rest. I'm so tired. When you come from the post office, you seem so young, but so sad. I'm so tired. I don't like postal work. I don't like it. You have grown thinner. Mm -hmm. And you look younger, rather like a boy in the face. And that's the way she does her hair. <laughs> there must be some other job. This one doesn't suit me. What I, what I so longed for, what I dreamed about, it's exactly what it's lacking in. It's work without poetry, without meaning, and... Well, there's the doctor knocking. Will you knock back, dear, please? I'm very tired. He will come in a moment. I'm told that the doctor and Andre went to the casino yesterday and Andre lost 200 rubles. Well, it can't be helped now. Two weeks ago, he lost money. In December, he lost money. I, I wish he'd hurry up and lose everything because then we would leave this stupid town. My God. <laughs> Every night, I dream of Moscow. And it's perfect madness. But we'll be there in June. But there's still February and March, April, May. That's almost half a year. I just hope that Natasha won't hear of his losses. No, I don't suppose she cares. Well, here he is. Has he paid his rent? No. Not a kopeck in eight months. <laughs> Look how he sits so seriously. Why are you so quiet, Alexander Ignatyevich? I don't know. I'm longing for tea. I give half my life for a glass of tea. <laughs> I've had nothing to eat since morning. Irina Sergeyevna. What is it? Come here. <clears throat> see. Well, if they won't bring us tea, let's have some vodka, shall we? Oh, by all means, what are we going to discuss? Oh, what? Let's... 
dream, for instance, of the life that will come in two or three hundred years. Well, when we're dead, men will fly to Mars, change their DNA, change the fashion of their clothes. We'll discover six sense, perhaps, and develop it, but life will remain just the same. Difficult, full of mysteries and unhappiness. In a thousand years, men will say just the same. Oy, 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 how hard life is and all that, but still, he would be afraid of death and not want it. Oh, I don't know. It seems to me that everything on Earth is bound to change by degrees and is changing before our very eyes. Ugh. In two or three hundred years, perhaps a thousand, the time doesn't matter, a new happy life will come. <laughs> we won't share in that life, of course, but we'll be living for it, working for it, sacrificing. <laughs> and that alone is the purpose of our existence, our happiness, if you like. <laughs> what is it? Oh, um, I don't know, I've been laughing all day. I went to the same school as you, I didn't go to the military academy. I read a great deal, but I don't know quite how to choose my books, and quite likely I read the wrong things. I'm turning into an old man. My hair is turning gray. Ah, oh, I know so little. And yet I do think that I know and, and thoroughly grasp what is essential and matters most. And that is to make you see that there is no happiness for us. That there shall not be and there will not be. We must work and work and work. And happiness is, is a legacy for our descendants. If not for us, at least for the remote descendants of our descendants. So, so, so you think there's no use even dreaming of happiness? But what if I'm happy? You're not. <laughs> uh, it's clear we don't understand each other. God, how am I to convince you? <laughs> oh, you laugh, laugh. Not only two or three hundred years, but in a million years, life will be just the same. It doesn't change, it remains stationary, following its own laws which we have nothing to do with or which, anyway, we'll never find out. Migratory birds, cranes, for instance, they fly backwards and forwards, and whatever ideas, great or small, may stray through their minds, they'll still go on flying just the same, without knowing where or why. They fly and will continue to fly, however philosophic they may become. It, it doesn't really matter how philosophical they are, so long as they go on flying. But still, isn't there a meaning? Meaning? <laughs> Say it's snowing. What meaning is there in that? I think man ought to have faith, or ought to seek a faith in the party or the church or something, otherwise his life is empty. Empty. To live and not to understand why cranes fly. Why children are born, why there are stars in the sky. You've got to know what you're living for, otherwise it's nonsense, a waste. Still, what a waste when your youth is gone. The goal says it's dull living in this world, my friends. And I say it is difficult to argue with you, my friends. Oh well, I give up. I give up. The Beatles started out in Hamburg. The die is cast. I must make a note of that. <laughs> The Beatles started out. The Beatles started in out in Hamburg. You know, Maria Sergeyevna, I have resigned from the army. So I hear. And I see nothing good in that. I don't like civilians. <clears throat> oh, never mind. I'm not tall enough for an officer anyway. But that doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter because. I'm going to work in factory. I'm going to work in factory. If only for one day in my life I could come home and just lay to sleep so tired and exhausted from hard days of work. You see, workmen must sleep soundly. I bought these markers for you just now as I pa passed the mini mall on Moscow Street. <laughs> And, 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 and I got you a Swiss army knife, too. Here. <laughs> you are so used to treating me as a little girl, and you know that I am all grown up. And, 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 and I got one for myself, too. Look, it's, look here's, here's one blade, and here's another, and there's a third somewhere, and, and, and this is for cleaning your teeth. Doctor, how old are you? Me? 32. Here, I'll, I'll show you a better kind of solitaire. Oh, what a wind there is. Yes. Oh, I'm sick of this winter. I can hardly remember what summer is like. The game will work out right. We shall go to Moscow. <laughs> no, the, the game is not working out right. You see, you have the, the ace of hearts over the two of spades, so that means you won't go to Moscow. AIDS is raging in the U.S. Andre, come and get your tea. You too, sir. 
Uh, excuse me, I've forgotten your name. Rasheen. Oh, Rasheen, yes. Nanny, can you please bring me a clean glass? I'm not going in there. Nanny? Yes, yes dear. What? Oh, my baby. Oh. On visa! You work so hard. You're so On visa! I'm coming. Oh. I'm coming. Little babies understand. They understand very well. Good morning, Bubba. Good morning, darling, I said to him, and he looked at me in quite a special way. Oh, you think that because I say that because I'm his mother, but no, I assure you, he's an extraordinary child. If that child were mine, I'd fry him in a pan and eat him. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird man you are. Happy people don't notice whether it's winter or summer. I think if I lived in Moscow, I wouldn't mind what the weather was like. The other day I was reading the diary of a World War II French minister written in prison. The minister was condemned for collaboration. With what enthusiasm and delight he describes the birds he sees from the prison window, which he never noticed before, and he'll not notice after he's released. In much the same way, you won't notice Moscow when you live in it. There is no happiness. We only long for it. Where are the chocolates? So Leone has eaten them. All of them? And there's a message for you. For me? Yes. Uh -huh. oh. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. For my daughter. Yes, of course. Always the same. Uh. Maria Sergeyevna, I'll not stay for tea. I must go. Terrible business. Uh, what is it? Not my secret? Wife. My wife swallowed some pills again. I'll go this way without being seen, my dear, sweet, splendid woman. Where is he off to? I, I'm just pouring his tea. Uh, what a terrible man. I'll leave him alone. But I, he asked for tea. I'm just pouring oh, it. Don't and bother me. Give me no peace. But that's not right. Don't bother me, old lady! Well, what's upsetting you, my dear? Anfisa! Anfisa! Anfisa. He keeps calling me and he just sits Oh, there. let me sit down. You take up all the table with your cards. Masha, you are so mean. Well, if I'm mean, then don't talk to me. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> oh, you're 60 years old, but you talk bullshit like a schoolboy. Dear Masha. <laughs> yes? <laughs> well, why make use of such expressions in conversation? Oh, well, with your attractive looks, I tell you straight out, you would have been simply fascinating in a well-bred social circle. <laughs> well, if it were not for the things you say. <laughs> Je vous prie, pardonnez-moi, Marie, mais vous avez des manières pour un grossier. <coughs> give me, give me up. I think there's some brain. Il va comment, Bobic? Déjà n'avez pas. He's awake. He's not feeling well today. Excuse me, I must go to him. <laughs> 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 Alexander Ignatievich gone. Home. Something going on with his wife again. You always sit alone, thinking, thinking. There's no making out what you think about. Come, let's make peace. Let's have a drink of cognac. Why do you want to make peace? I haven't quarreled with you. Where well, you <laughs> always make me feel as though something had gone wrong between us. <laughs> you are a strange character. There's no denying that. I am strange. Who is not strange? Thus quote the raven, nevermore, nevermore. I don't see what the raven's got to do with it. When I'm tete-a-tete -tete with someone, I'm all right, just like anyone else. But when I'm in company, I get depressed and shy, and I say all sorts of idiotic things. And yet I am still more conscientious and honest than many, and I can prove it. I often feel angry with you. You're always attacking me when we're in the company of others, but somehow I like you. The hell with it. I'm going to drink a lot today, so let's drink. What? You know, I've never had anything against you, Aaron. But I do have the temperament of Poe. As a matter of fact, I do rather resemble Edgar Allan Poe, or so I'm told. <laughs> <clears throat> I've turned in my resignation today. I've had enough of it. Been thinking of it for two years, and at last, I've come to a decision. I'm going to work. Never more. 
I'm going to work. <clears throat> the, the food, too, was real Caucasian stuff. <coughs> uh, it was uh, bean soup, and for the meat course, they had chahartma. Now, charemcha is not a meat at all. It's a plant, rather like our onion. No, uh, no, my dear soul, it's, it's not an onion at all, but it's, uh, it's mutton roasted in a very special way. No, and I tell you that charemcha is an onion. And I tell you, chahartma is lamb stew. And I tell you that charemcha is an onion. What's the point of arguing with you? You have never even been to the Caucasus. Nor have you eaten chahart. I haven't had it because I can't stand it. Cherempcha smells like garlic. All right, thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> when are the numbers coming? Oh, they'll be here at nine, so that soon. Yesterday, all oh, my, my troubles seem so far away. All you need is love. They're here. All you need is love. All I need is love. That was great. Uh, oh, how with it? Love, Let's have a drink. Love, love is all. <laughs> Let's drink to our everlasting friendship. I'll go to Moscow University if you do Andrusha. Uh, which one? There are two big universities in Moscow. Mm, there's only one big university in Moscow. No, I tell you there are two. There may be three for all I care, so much the better. There are two universities in Moscow. There are two large mm. universities in Moscow. There's, there's the old Lomonosov University in the Lenin Mountains and, 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 and the technical one. And if you can't stand it, if, if what I say irritates you, uh, I can be quiet. I can even go in the other room. <laughs> bravo, bravo, ladies and gentlemen. Let's begin. Let's listen to some music. <laughs> Cancelled. You see, dear, what has happened is Natasha says Bobic is not feeling well, and so. You know what? I know nothing about it, and I don't seem to care either. <laughs> Bobic isn't feeling well. Well, it's not the first time we're screwed. If we're being kicked out, we must go. It's not Bobic that's ill, but she's rather petty, vulgar creature. What a pity! I was. Looking forward to spending the evening, but if the child is ill, then I'll bring him a toy in the morning. I took a long nap on purpose. I thought we'd be dancing all night. It's only nine. Well, let's go outside. We can talk there. We'll decide what to do. I never got married, because I never had time to it. Life 
flashed by me like lightning. And uh, because I was passionately in love with your mother, who was married. A person shouldn't get married. Shouldn't. It's boring. Oh, that's all very well, but what about loneliness? <laughs> you say what you like, but loneliness is a terrible thing. But it doesn't matter. All right, let's go. Why, what's your hurry? We have plenty of time. I'm afraid my wife may stop me. Oh. Listen, I'm not going to play today. I'll just sit and look on. That's all right with you. I'm not feeling particularly well. I can't find my damn sleeve. Tell my doctor, what should I do for shortness of breath? Don't ask me, my boy. <laughs> I've forgotten everything. <laughs> Nanny? Yes, who is it? It's the mummers. It's their old dress. Tell them that there is no one home and that they must excuse us. No one here. Where are they all? They've gone home. How strange. Uh, are you alone here? Yes. Good night. I behaved tactlessly earlier, without sufficient restraint just now. But you're not like the others. You're honest and noble. You see the truth. You alone can understand me. And, and I love you. I love you deeply, infinitely. No, please, good night. I cannot live without you. My, my love yeah, on those gorgeous, exquisite, marvelous eyes on which I've never seen on any other woman. Please, Vasily Vasilyevich, you must go. I speak to you of love now for the first time, and I feel as though I am not on earth, but but on another planet. God, it doesn't matter. It, there is no force in kindness, of course, but, but there must not be any successful rivals. No, there must not. I swear on all that is sacred, I will kill any rival. Exquisite being. Is Andre there? Oh, let him read. Oh. Excuse me, Vasily Vasilyevich. I didn't know you were here and I'm in my dressing gown. I don't care. Good night. <laughs> oh, my dear little girl, you're tired. You ought to go to bed earlier. Is, uh, Bobik asleep? Oh, he is asleep, but not sleeping quietly. By the way, dear, I've been meaning to speak with you, but either you're not here or I'm too busy. <laughs> I'm afraid Bobik's nursery is cold and damp and your room is so nice for a baby, my sweet, my dear. You could move for the time in with Olya. Where? Oh, you would be in Olga's room, and Bobak in your room. Oh, darling child. I looked at him today and said, Bobak, you are mine, you are mine. And he looked at me with his funny little eyes. <laughs> well, that must be Olga, how late she is. Potopopo? <clears throat> what a crazy fellow he is. Well, Comrade Potopopov has come and asked me to go with him for a ride. How strange men are. If someone comes, I've, I've gone for a quarter of an hour. Tell him I'll be right there. Oh, that must be Olga. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. 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 Well, this is strange. You said they were going to have a party tonight. Went away half an hour ago, they were expecting the carnival people. <laughs> yes, they've all gone home. Has Masha gone home too? Where, where is she gone? And why is Protopopov waiting below in his Mercedes? <laughs> Who's he waiting for? Please, don't ask me questions. I am very tired. Oh, isn't she a bad little girl? <sighs> the meeting was only just finished. I'm tired out. The principal is ill, and I will have to take his place. Oh, 
my head. Oh, my head aches. Oh, my head. Andre lost 200 rubles yesterday at cards. The whole town is talking about it. Yes, I'm exhausted from the meeting, too. My wife took it into her head to give me a fright. She nearly killed herself. But it's over now, and I'm glad. It's a relief. Are we supposed to leave, then? Very well. I cannot go home. I absolutely cannot. Fedor Ilyich, let's do something together. Come along. I am tired. I'm not coming. I'm tired. Has my wife gone home? Yes. I expect so. Oh, goodbye. I have all day tomorrow and the next day to rest. <sighs> Good night. I did want some tea. I was counting on spending the evening in pleasant company. Accusative of exclamation. Well, in that case, I must go alone. Oh, my head aches. How my head aches. Andre's lost at cards. The whole town is talking about it. I'm going to go and lie down. Tomorrow I'll be free. God, how nice that is. Tomorrow I'm free. And the day after I'm free. Oh, my head does ache. Oh, my head. They're all gone. They've left. I'll be gone for half an hour. I'll only go a little ways. <laughs> To Moscow, to Moscow, to Moscow, to Moscow, to Moscow, to Moscow, to Moscow. Я спросил тебя, зачем идете в гору? just sitting there under the stairs and I and I said to them you mustn't stay there come upstairs you mustn't stay there but they just cried they just oh they said we don't know where father is what if father is burnt oh oh what an idea oh, and those poor souls in the backyard they're all undressed too take this oh. gray dress and this, and the blouse too, and these pants, oh. Nanny. Oh dear, what a dreadful thing. All of Siberia is burning, it seems. Kesano Street is burnt to the ground. Oh. Take this, and this. Oh, sorry, we mustn't. The Virginians have had a good fright, poor things. We mustn't let them go home. Let them stay the night here, okay? We can't let them go home. And poor Fedotyuk. He has had everything burnt. He doesn't have a thing left. Don't you? Yes. Oh. 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 oh, you know, uh, you better get some help because... Uh, where I is everyone going? Farapont, come in! Oh, how awful it is, and I'm sick of it. Oh. Oh. Where is he? Farapont, oh. here, take these. Carry them outside. The Kolotilin girls are outside. Give it to them and oh, give these to you. Yes, miss. In 1812, Moscow was burnt too. Napoleon. The French were surprised. You can go now. Yes, miss. Oh, nanny darling, let's give them everything. We don't want anything. Just give it all to them. I'm tired. I can hardly stand on my feet. 
the Virginians, we can't let them go home. The two little girls can stay in the living room, and Alexander Ignatovich can go to Aaron's, Fedotik can go to Aaron's too, or he can sleep in our living room. As bad luck will have it, the doctor is drunk, frightfully drunk, so no one can be put in his room, and Virginian's wife can be in the living room too. <laughs> Won't you shoot me? Don't send me to a nursing home. Please don't send me away. That, that's nonsense, <laughs> Nanny. No one is sending you away. Oh, oh my heart. My treasure. <laughs> you know I work. I do my best. But I'm weak. And, and everyone will say, send her away. But where, where will I go? Where? I'm 80, 81, but where oh, will I go? Sit down, sit down, Nanny, oh, darling. You're tired. Poor oh, thing, rest. Dear oh, good oh, Nanny. Oh, don't. how pale you don't. are. They're saying we must form a committee at once for the assistance of those whose houses have burnt. Well, that's a good idea. We ought always be ready to help the poor. It's the duty of those better off. Bobak and baby Sophie are sleeping, sleeping as though nothing were happening. Oh, and there's such a lot of people in this house. Everywhere you go, the house is full. There is a flu epidemic in town now, and I'm so afraid the children are going to get it. In this room, you can't see the fire. It's quiet here. Yes, my hair must be untidy. They say I've grown fatter, but it's not true. Not a bit. Oh, and Masha is asleep. Tired out, poor dear. <laughs> Don't you sit in my presence! Get up! Get out of this room! Go! Oh, what you keep the old woman for, I can't understand. Excuse me, I don't understand either. She's a peasant. She's not fit for work. She should go back to the country. You spoil people. I like order in this house. There ought to be no useless people in the house. Oh. You're tired, poor dear. Our principal is tired. When baby Sophie is all grown and goes to high school, I shall be afraid of you. <laughs> I won't be principal. Oh, you'll be nominated, Alechka. That's a settled thing. I'll refuse. I can't. It's too much for me. You were so rude to Nanny just now. Excuse me. I can't endure it. It makes me feel faint. Oh, forgive me, Ole. Yeah, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Forgive me. <laughs> You must understand me, my dear. Maybe we were strangely brought up, but I can't endure it. Such an attitude oppresses me. It makes me ill, and I feel simply unnerved by it. Well, forgive me. Forgive me. The very slightest rudeness, a tactless word, upsets me. Yes, I often say too much, that's true. But you might as well admit she'd be better with her relatives in the country. <gasps> Or a nursing home! She has been with us for 30 years! But now she can't work. Either I don't understand or you don't understand me. She's not fit for work. All she does is sleep. Or, or sit still. Well, let her sit still! Sit still how? I don't understand you, Olya. I have a nanny to look after the children. What do we need the old woman for? What's the use of her? This night has made me 10 years older. We must come to an understanding, Olya. You are at the high school. I am at home. You are teaching while I look after the house. And if I have anything to say about the house, I know what I'm talking about. I do know what I'm talking about. And that old thief, that old witch, that old hag shall clear out of this house tomorrow. I will not have people annoy me. I will not have it. <laughs> Really, if you don't move into the room next door, we'll always be quarreling like this. It's awful. Where's Marsha? It's time to be going home. The fire's died down. Oh. So, <laughs> they say only one part of the town has been burned, despite the wind. It seemed at first the whole town would be destroyed. I'm exhausted. Oh, my dear. I often think if it had not been for Masha, I would have married you. <laughs> You're so good. I'm tired out. Oh. What is that? 
It's unfortunate the doctor fell off the wagon today. He's helplessly drunk. Most unfortunate he's coming this way, I believe. Can you hear? Yes, he's coming this way. Really? I'm not Don't give me away. He hasn't drunk in two years. Now he's gone and done it. The devil take them! Damn them all! Think I'm a doctor? I can treat all sorts of complaints? And I really know nothing about it! I've forgotten everything I knew. I remember nothing! Nothing! Last Wednesday, I treated a woman in Zadzip. She died. It's my fault she died. Oh, yeah, I knew something 25 years ago, but now I've forgotten it all. I know nothing. Nothing. Maybe I'm, I'm not a man after all, but just uh, pretend to have arms and legs and a head. Maybe I don't exist at all, but only imagine that I walk around and eat and sleep. If only I didn't exist. <laughs> I don't care. I don't give a damn. Who the hell knows? The day before yesterday, there was a conversation at the officers' club. And they talked about Solzhenitsyn and Pasternak. No, I've read nothing, nothing at all, but I, I looked as though I'd read them. <laughs> and the others, they did the same as I did. The vulgarity, the meanness. And that woman I killed on Wednesday came back into my mind. And it all came back into my mind. Everything was so nasty and disgusting and all, all twisted in my soul. I went and got drunk. Let's sit in here. No one's going to bother us in here. If it hadn't been for the soldiers helping out, the whole town would have burnt down. <clears throat> splendid men there. First-rate men. Splendid. Oh, what time is it? Half past three. It's getting light already. And nobody seems to be thinking of going. Everyone's in the dining room, and that Solioni of yours is there as well. Doctor, you ought to go to bed. I'm all right, thank you. You've been hitting the bottle, Ivan Romanich. <laughs> Bravo. In Watka Veritas. Everyone's asking me to organize a benefit for the families whose houses have burned down. Why? Who's left? Well, we could do it if we wanted to. Uh, Maria Sergeyevna plays the piano splendidly, to my thinking. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, played splendidly. No, she's forgotten. She hasn't played in three or four years. There's absolutely no one who understands music in this town. Not a soul, but I do understand. And on my honor, I assure you, Maria Sergeyevna plays magnificently, almost, almost with genius. You're right, Aaron. I, it, I'm very fond of her. Masha, I mean, she's, she's good. God, to be able to play so gloriously, know that no one understands you. Yes, but it would it make sense for her to take part in a concert? I, I, I know nothing about it. My friends, perhaps it would be all right. 
There's no denying that our principal is a fine man, indeed very fine, very intelligent. But he has such strange views. Of course, it's not his business, but if you'd like, I'll speak to him about it. I heard a rumor yesterday about our brigade being transferred somewhere far away. Some say to the Caucasus, others to Afghanistan. Yes, yes, I heard something about that too. But well, the whole town will be dead then. But then we'll be alone here. Smithery. To smash such a valuable thing. Oh, Ivan Romanich, I'd give you a D for behavior. That was Mother's clock. Perhaps. Well, if it was hers, it was. Maybe I didn't smash it at all, but it only seems as though I had. Perhaps it only seems to us that we exist. But really, we aren't here at all. I don't know anything. Nobody knows anything. What are you all staring at? Natasha has got a little affair going with Protopopple. And you don't see it. You just sit here and you don't see anything. Well, Natasha has a little affair going with Protopopoff. All you need is love. All you need is love. Yes. How very strange it all is, really. When the fire began, I ran home as fast as I could. I, I went up and saw that our house was safe and sound and out of danger, but my little girls were standing in the doorway in their nightgowns. Their mother was nowhere to be seen. People were rustling. Everyone was running about, bustling about, and my children's faces were filled with alarm, horror, pleas for help, I don't know what. It broke my heart to see their faces. My God, I thought, how much more will these children have to go through in the years to come? I, I took their hands and ran along with them and could think of nothing else but what more they would have to go through in this world. I got to your house. I, I found their mother here, screaming angrily. And while my little girls were standing in the doorway in their nightgowns and the street was red with fire and there was a fearful noise in the street, I thought that something like it used to happen during the Great War when the enemy would suddenly make a raid and begin plundering and burning, and yet, in reality, what a difference there is between now and what has been in the past. And when a little more time has passed, maybe a hundred years, people will look on our manner of life with horror and derision, and everything about today will seem awkward and heavy and very strange and uncomfortable. And what a wonderful life it will be! What a wonderful life! Forgive me for voicing my theories, but allow me to go on. I have a a strong desire to talk about the future. I'm in the mood. It's as though everyone were asleep. And so I say to you, what a wonderful life it will be. Can you only imagine? Now, in this town, there are only three of your kind. But in generations to come, there will be more and more and more. And the time will come when everything will change and be as you would want. <laughs> they will live your way. And later on, Yours too will be out of date, and people will be born who will be better than you. <laughs> I'm in such a strange state of mind today. I have a fiendish longing for life. Dance with me. Da 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 da. Dum dum. Burnt ashes, burnt ashes. Everything I had in the world. That's not a joke. Did everything burn? Yeah, everything I had in the world. My guitar is burnt, and my camera is burnt, and all my letters. And the notebook I meant to give you. That's burnt, too. No. 
Vasily Vasilyevich, you can't stay here. How is it that Aaron Lovovich can and I can't? <laughs> you really must be going. How's the fire? They say it's dying down. <laughs> no, really, I'm trying to understand why Aaron Lovovich can be here, not me. Now, very well, I'll take note of it. I'll explain what I mean further. But I'm afraid I might provoke the geese. Awful that Solioni has made this room smell of tobacco. Aaron. Aaron. Aaron Lobovich! Oh, I'm tired of Brickyard. Oh. No, 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 I, I wasn't talking in my sleep. I really am going to the brick factory soon to begin work. It's nearly settled. You're so pale, lovely and fascinating. It seems to me as though your paleness sheds a light through the dark air. But you're melancholy, you're dissatisfied with life. Come with me, let's go to work together. Aaron Lovovich, please, go. Oh, are you here? <laughs> I didn't see you, I'm sorry. I'm going, I'm going, bye. Oh. I look at you now and I remember as though it were long ago how on your birthday you talked of the joy of work. You were so cheerful and confident. What happy life I dreamt of. What has become of it? Oh, darling, there are tears in your eyes. Go to bed. It's getting light already. It's nearly morning. If only I could give my life for you. Aaron Lovovich, please go. Really, this is too much. Go, you go. Know, go. Bye. Are you asleep, Theodore? Uh, you better go home. Oh, my darling Masha. Oh, my precious girl. Please, let her rest, Fedya. I'll go at once. My charming wife. I love you. My only one. Amo, amas, samat, amamu, samati, samant. Yes, really. She's a wonderful woman. You've been my wife for seven years, and it seems to me as though we were only married yesterday. I swear to you. Yes, really. You're a wonderful woman. I'm content. I'm content. I'm content. I'm bored. I'm bored, I'm bored. <sighs> and there's something I can't get out of my head. It's simply revolting. It's stuck in my head like a nail. I must talk about it. I mean, about Andre. He's mortgaged this house to the bank, and his wife has grabbed all the money, and this house doesn't belong to him alone, but to all four of us. He ought to know that if he's a decent man. Why do you want to bother with it, Marsha? What's got into you? And Drusha's in debt all around. So there. I'm simply revolting anyway. We're not poor. I work. I go to the high school and I get private lessons. I do my duty. There's no nonsense about me. <laughs> Omnia mea mecum porto, as the saying goes. I don't want anything. It's the injustice that revolts me. Go, Theodore. You're tired. <laughs> I'm gonna... You rest for half an hour. I'm gonna sit and wait for you. Our Andre has grown. How dull and old he has become beside that woman. 
At one point he was working to be a professor, and yesterday he was boasting that he had finally become a member of the district party committee. He's a member and protopop office chairman, and everyone here is helping to put out the fire, and he just sits in his room and he watches TV and he plays piano all day, and it's awful. It's awful. It's awful. It's awful, and I, I can't bear it. I, I can't bear it. I can't. I, I, throw me out. Please uh, throw me out. Uh, what, what is it? What is it, darling? Where is it? Where has it all gone? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm forgetting everything. Everything is a tangle in my mind, and I'm forgetting the Italian word for window and ceiling, and my life is slipping away, and I can't... We're never going to go to Moscow. We're never going to go. Darling. Darling. No. I can't work. I don't want to work anymore. I've had enough of it. Enough. I've been a postal clerk now. And now I have a job in the town council. And I hate and despise every single bit of work that they give me. I'm already 23 and I've been working for years and my brains are drying up. I'm getting thin and old and ugly and there's nothing, nothing. Not the slightest satisfaction and you see that you're moving away from a real beautiful life and moving farther and farther into the depths and I'm in despair, and I don't know how it is that I'm alive, and I haven't killed myself yet. Don't cry. Don't <laughs> cry, my child. It makes me ill. <laughs> no, I'm not crying. I'm not crying. I won't. It's over. I won't. Darling, I'm speaking to you as a sister, as a friend. If you care for my advice, marry Aaron Lebovich. I know <sighs> you respect him, you think highly of him. It's true, he isn't good looking, but he is such a thoroughly nice man. <laughs> so good. A person doesn't always marry for love, but to do her duty. That's what I think anyway. I just kept thinking that we would move to Moscow and there I would find my true love. Because I had been dreaming of him. And I've been loving him, and now I just see that it's nonsense. It's all nonsense. My darling, <laughs> lovely sister. I understand it all. You know, when Aaron left the army, and he came to us in a plain coat, I thought he looked so homely that it absolutely made me cry. <laughs> Why are you crying? He asked me. How could I tell him? But if God brought you together, I would be happy. That's a different thing, you know. Quite different. Ugh. She walks about as though it were she who set fire to the town. <laughs> you are silly, Masha. You are the very silliest of the family. That's you. <laughs> Please forgive me. <laughs> I want to confess my sins, dear sisters. Oh, my soul is so light. I'm going to confess to you and never again to anyone. I mean, it's my secret, but you must know everything. 
I'm in love. I'm in love. Well, you know who I mean. I might as well come straight out and say it. I love Urshin and... Ugh. Stop it. I am not listening anyway. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, what am I to do? At first I thought him st strange, but then I was sorry for him, and then I came to love him. To love him with his voice and his words and his misfortunes and his two little girls. I'm not listening anyway. Whatever silly things you say, I won't hear them. Uh oh, yeah, you are the silly one. I love him, so that's my fate. It means that that's my lot. And he loves me too. Oh, it's all so terrifying. I mean, yes, is it wrong? Oh, my darling, how are we to live our lives? I mean, what is to become of us when, okay, when you watch a movie, it all seems trite and obvious, but when you're in love yourself, you see that no one knows anything. And we all must settle things for ourselves. Now I've confessed it. Uh, now I'll hold my tongue. I'll, I'll be like a ghost madman. Silence. Silence. What do you want? I can't make it out. I've told you ten times already, Andrei Sergeyevich. In the first place, I'm not Andrei Sergeyevich. Comrade Prozorov to you. Comrade. Mm -hmm. The firemen asked permission, Your Honor, to go through the garden on their way to the fire hydrant. Or else they'd have to go round and round. An awful nuisance for them. All right. Tell them all right. Good God, I'm sick of them. Where's Olga? Olga, I need your key to the car. I've lost mine. Do you have that little silver key? Thank you. What a tremendous fire, huh? Now it's begun to die down. Damn it all, that Fairbomb made me so cross I said something silly to him. Comrade Prozor. <laughs> Why don't you speak, Olya? All right. All right, it's time to drop this, this foolishness and sulking all about. You're here, Masha. And you too, Irina. Very well, then. Let us have things out thoroughly. Once and for all. What do you have against me? Well, what is it? Stop it, Andrusha. Let's talk tomorrow. What an agonizing night. No, do not get upset. I'm asking you quite calmly. What do you have against me? Tell me straight out! Tum tum! Good night, Olya. God bless you. Sleep well. Good night, Andre. Well, you better leave them rest. They're tired. You can go into things tomorrow. Yes. Really, Andrusha. Let's put it off till tomorrow. It's time we were in bed. You know what? I think I'll say what I have to say, and then I'll go. It seems that you have... <laughs> First of all, it seems that you have something against Natasha, my wife, and I've noticed it from the very day of our marriage. Natasha is a splendid, conscientious, straightforward, honorable woman that is my opinion. I love and respect my wife, do you hear? I respect her, and I insist that other people respect her too. I repeat, Natasha is a splendid, conscientious, honorable woman, and all of your disagreements are simply caprice. Secondly, you seem to be cross with me for not being a professor, not working at some university. But I have a job. I am the second secretary of the party committee. And I consider this service just as sacred and elevated as the service of learning, if you care to know. That's right. That's right. I am a member of the party committee, and I am damn proud of that fact. And thirdly, thirdly, there is something else I've been meaning to bring up to you girls. It, well, it seems that I have mortgaged the house without asking your permission. That's right. That's, yes, yes, for that, for that I am to blame. 
And I, I ask your pardon for it, I apologize. But I'm not gambling now. I gave up cards long ago. I was driven to it by my debts. Need I remind you, 35,000? But, but I've come clean. The chief thing, however, that I can say in self-defense is that you girls, you get a pension while I don't get much wages. Is Masha here? No. Where is she? Strange. There, there we go. Natasha is an excellent conscientious woman! When I married her, I thought we would be happy. I thought we would be happy, all of us. You never trust a thing I say. You never trust a word I say. You don't believe a thing I say, and damn it, you... You mustn't... You mustn't... Oh, God. Dear sisters. Don't believe me. Who is that knocking on the wall? It's the doctor, Ivan Romanich. He's drunk. What an awful night. Oh, yeah? Have you heard? They're transferring the brigade somewhere very far away. That's only a rumor. But then we'll be alone here. Oh, yeah. Well. I'll marry Aaron. I will. I, I respect him. I think highly of him. I'll consent only. Please, let's go to Moscow. Only if we go to Moscow. Please, let's go to Moscow. <laughs> Good fellow. We've been so happy together. Once more, goodbye, my friend. Until we meet again? Take care. No, it's goodbye for good. <coughs> Who knows? We'll never meet again. Oh, come on. No, I'm crying. No, we shall meet again. <laughs> In 10 years or 15, perhaps, but by then, we shall scarcely recognize each other. We'll greet each other coldly. Smile, once more, for the last time. Thank you. We'll never see each other again. Thank you for everything. 
Well, God willing, we shall meet each other again. Write to us. Be sure to write to us. Can't you stand still for a second? Goodbye, trees! <laughs> Echo! Goodbye, Echo. I wouldn't be surprised if you get married in Afghanistan. Your Afghan wife will clasp you in her arms and say, Inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> we have less than an hour. Out of the whole battery, only Soyoni is going in the car. We're going in the truck with the rank and file. Three divisions of the battery are going today and three more tomorrow. And peace and quiet shall descend upon the town. And dreadful boredom, too. Where is Miriam Sugeva? Uh, Marsha is in the garden. We must say goodbye to her, then. Oh. Goodbye. You must go where I shall begin to cry. We've had a splendid time. I bought this uh, souvenir for you. It's a, it's a notebook. We'll go down this way, by the river. <sighs> Hello! <sighs> They're gone. They've forgotten to say goodbye to me. <laughs> well, what about you? <laughs> uh, I suppose I forgot to. But I'll be seeing them again soon. I'm setting off tomorrow. <laughs> yes, I have one more day here. And then in a year, I'll be on the retired list, and I'll come back here, and I'll spend the rest of my life near you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just one more year till I retire. Then I'll come back here, and I'll arrange my life quite differently. I'll become a quiet and a honor honorable and well-behaved person. Well, you ought to arrange your life differently, Ivan Romanich, that's for sure. You ought to do something. Oh, well, yes, that's how I feel, too. <laughs> Yesterday, all my troubles seemed so far away. <laughs> Ivan Romanich is incorrigible. Incorrigible. Well, you should take me under your wing. Then I would reform. <laughs> I can't bear to look at Fyodor. He shaved off his mustache. Now he looks so silly. <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> well, I could tell you what your face looks like now, but I'd better not. <laughs> well, it's the thing to do. Modus vivendi. Our school board director has clean shaven, and now that I'm second in command, I've started shaving too. Nobody likes it, but I don't care. I'm content. With mustache or without mustache, I'm equally content. Ivan Romanich, hmm. I'm so terribly uneasy today. And I know you were at the boulevard yesterday. Please tell me what has happened. What happened? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. There's all the... Uh, it doesn't matter. Story is... Solioni and Aaron Lovovich met yesterday on the boulevard near That's the That's enough. Theater. That's enough. Please, stop it. Near the theater, Solioni began pestering Aaron Lovovich and lost his temper and then he I, said something offensive. I don't know. It's all nonsense. A teacher at a high school wrote <laughs> nonsense at the bottom of an essay and his student puzzled over it thinking, what's a Latin word? <laughs> Terribly funny. <laughs> they say that Solioni uh, is in love with Irina and hates Aaron Lovovich. It's natural. Irina's a very nice girl. Hello! Hello! <sighs> Somehow everything frightens me today. All of my things are packed, and after dinner someone will send for my luggage. And Aaron and I are to be married tomorrow. He will go to the brick factory and I will go teach children. A new life is beginning. God will help me. When I passed my teacher exam yesterday, I felt so blissful and so happy that I cried. The truck is going to be coming for all of my things. That's fine, but it doesn't seem serious. It's all nothing but ideas and very little that is serious. However, I support you with all my heart. My dear, sweet girl, my heart of gold. You've gone so far ahead. 
<laughs> I'm left behind like a migrant bird too old and to fly. But you fly, my dear. Well, you fly. Today the officers will be gone and everything will go on just as it used to be. Whatever people may say about Masha, she is a true good woman. I love her dearly. And I'm thankful for my lot. People have different lots in life. <clears throat> There's a man called Cozy Rev, my classmate from the university, a comrade serving on the Board of Education. He was expelled from the fifth grade because he could not understand the youth consecutivum. Now, he's frightfully poor and ill. When I meet him, I say, how are you? Oot consecutivum? Yes, he says. Just so um, <coughs> consecutivum, but then he coughs. I've always been successful and fortunate. I've even got the Order of Lenin. And I'm teaching others that ut consecutiva. Of course, I'm clever, cleverer than most people. But happiness doesn't lie in that. Tomorrow, I will not be hearing that song, and I will not be seeing Protopopa. He's come again today. He's in the living room. The principal hasn't come? No. They've sent for her. If you only knew how awful it is for me to live here by myself. I'm alone, and I'm bored, and I, and I hate the room I live in. I've decided, if I'm not meant to go to Moscow, that so it must be. It must be destiny. And when Aaron asked for my hand again, I, I thought it over, and I made up my mind. He's a wonderful man, really. <laughs> He's good. It's really wonderful how good he is. <laughs> and then my soul suddenly lit up again as if I could fly, and I longed again for work. Only for work. <laughs> Only there's something... Something happened yesterday, and there's some mystery that is hanging over me. Nonsense. Our principal is here. The new principal is here. Mm -hmm. Well, then, let's go in. Here he sits, snug and settled. Well, why not? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Did you love my mother? Very much. Did she love you? That I don't remember. Is my man here? Oh, it's just like Aunt Martha used to say about her policeman. <laughs> Is my man here? <laughs> Not yet. Huh. Oh. When you get happiness and snatches and little bits and then lose it, as I'm losing it by degrees, one grows coarse and spiteful. Oh, I'm boiling here inside. <laughs> And here's our Andre, all our hopes shattered. It's as if thousands of people raised a huge bell, a lot of money and labor was spent on it, and all of a sudden it just fell and smashed. Just all of a sudden, for no reason whatsoever. That's just how it is with Andre. When will they be quiet in this house? There's always such a damn noise. Soon. My watch is an old-fashioned wind-up watch. Well, the first, the second, and the fifth batteries are setting off today, and I'm going tomorrow. For good? Uh, I don't know. Perhaps I'll come back in a year. Well, God only knows. What difference does it make? Does it matter? The town will be empty. As though someone put a blanket over it. Something happened yesterday near the theater. Everyone is talking about it, but I seem to know nothing about it. It was nothing. Nonsense. Uh, 
Solioni began annoying Aaron, and he lost his temper and insulted him, and the end result was Solioni challenged him to a fight. It's time, I think. They said it for half past twelve in the Crown Forest that we can see from here beyond the river. <laughs> that Solioni, he thinks that he is Pope. He even writes poetry. Joking aside, it's not his first fight. Whose? Solioni's. And Aaron? Well, what about Aaron? Um, well, my thoughts are all tangled up. Well, I'm telling you, you shouldn't let them fight. He may wound Aaron or even kill him. My dear, Aaron Lvovich is a very fine fellow. But one Jew, more or less, in the world, what difference does it make? Just let them. It doesn't matter. Come on! Let's go! You can wait! Skvortsov, Solioni's friend, shouting, he's in a boat. In my opinion, to take part in a fight or to be present at it, even in the capacity of a doctor, is simply immoral. Well, that only seems so. We aren't here. Nothing in this world is real. We don't exist. Nothing exists. It doesn't matter. Oh, how they keep talking. Talking all day long. To live in such a climate where it can snow at any minute and then have all this talking on top of it. Oh, I'm not going inside. I can't go in there. You'll tell me when Vershining is here? Oh, and the birds are already flying south. Swans or geese. Darling, happy birds. Our house will be empty. The officers are going. You are going. Irina is getting married and I will be left in the house all alone. What about your wife? Yeah, a wife is a wife. She's a straightforward, upright woman. Kind, perhaps, but for all that, there's something in her which makes her no better than some blind, petty, hairy animal. <laughs> anyway, she's not a human being. I speak to you as a friend, the one man I can actually open up to. I, I do love Natasha, but sometimes she can be so absolutely vulgar and then I don't know what to think. I can't tell you why I love her or, or any way why I have loved her. I'm going away tomorrow, my boy, and uh, perhaps we'll never see each other again. So this is my advice to you. Put on your cap. You know, pick up your walking stick and get out. <laughs> Just get out. Just go. Go and keep on going and don't look back. Doctor, it's time. It's half past twelve. Right away. Sick of all of you. Uh, no use, if anyone asks for me, just say that uh, I'll be back in a little while. From the proud tower, in the tower, death looks gigantically down. Why are you complaining, old man? Come. <laughs> How are you feeling? Like a pig in clover. Well, there's nothing to be excited about. I won't do anything much. I'll only scratch him with my knife. Ooh. My hand smells like a corpse. Oh, yes. You know the poem. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I wander weak and weary. No, all I recall is he had not time to say a laugh before the bear was on his back. It's time! We're waiting! Papers for you to sign? No, let me alone. God, I beg you, please let me alone. This is what the papers are for, to be signed. yo Oh! Marsha? Uh -huh. Marsha? I believe that's the only man in town who's glad that the officers are going away. It's only quite natural. Our town is going to be empty now. Irina, I'll be back soon. Where are you going? Uh, I have to go to town and then uh, to see my comrades off. Aaron, that's not true. Why are you so absent-minded today? What happened yesterday near the theater? No, 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 I'll be back in an hour. Back with you again, my beautiful one. Five years now I've loved you. 
Still, I can't get used to it. Every day you see more and more lovely. Such exquisite, wonderful hair, beautiful eyes. I shall, I shall carry you off tomorrow. We'll go and work. We'll be rich. All of my dreams will come true, and you'll be so happy. There's only one thing. One thing. You don't love me. That's not in my power. I can't help it. But I'll be your wife. And I'll be faithful to you. But there isn't any love. I've never been in love my whole life. And I've... I've dreamed of it, and I've dreamed of it day and night, but it's as if my soul is like a wonderful piano that's locked, and the key to it's lost. You look worried. I didn't sleep all night. There's never been anything in my life so dreadful that it could frighten me, but that... The lost key torments my soul and it won't let me sleep and I just... Say something to me. What? Say something to me. What am I to say to you? Not anything. Stop. Please stop. What trifles. What little things suddenly out of nowhere acquire importance and like you... You laugh at them as usual, think they're nonsense, but still you, you go on and feel that you don't have the power to stop. I'm sorry, let, let's not talk about it. I'm happy. I'm happy. I feel as though I was seeing these firs, these maples, these birch trees for the first time in my life. And they all seem to be looking at me with, with curiosity and waiting. What beautiful trees. And really, a beautiful life ought to be under them. Aaron! <laughs> We're waiting! Oh, God, I must be off this time. Wait. You see that tree? That tree's dead. But it weighs in the wind with the others. And so it seems to me that if I die, I'll still be part of life. One way or another. Goodbye, my darling. Wait! I want those papers of yours you gave me. They're, they're under the calendar on my table. I'm coming with you. No! No. Coffee this morning. <laughs> Please make me some. become of my past. When I was young and happy and clever. When my dreams and thoughts were exquisite. When my present and my past were lit up with hope. <laughs> Why, on the very threshold of life, do we become these dull, drab, uninteresting, useless, lazy, indifferent creatures? This town has been in existence for 200 years. There are 20,000 people living in it, and there's not one man who's not like the rest. Not one man of learning. Not one important artist. Not, not one man of the least remarkable who could inspire envy or create.
create a passionate desire to imitate him. They only eat and drink and sleep. And then they die. <laughs> they die. <laughs> and others are born and they too eat, drink, and sleep and watch TV. And so not to be bored of stupefaction, they vary their lives by nasty gossip, vodka, cards, litigation. And the wives deceive their husbands. And the husbands tell lies and pretend that they see and hear nothing. And an overwhelmingly vulgar influence crushes the children, and they become the same sort of dead pathetic creatures just like their parents, so exactly like, just like their mothers and their fathers. Oh, what do you want? Eh? There are papers to sign. You're a nuisance. Leave me alone. The porter from the local court was saying just now that there was as much as 200 degrees of frost in Leningrad last winter. The person is hateful. But the future... The future is so nice, so free. A light dawns in the distance. I see freedom. I see how I and my children will become free from laziness, from vodka, from pork and cabbage, from naps after dinner, from this mean parasitic living. He says that 2,000 people were frozen to death. The people were terrified. It was either in Leningrad or Moscow. I don't remember. Oh, God. My sisters. My darling, wonderful sisters. Masha, my sister. Who is talking so loud out here? Andrusha, is that you? You wake baby Sophie. Il ne peut pas se déplier. La Sophie est dans mes déchets. Vous c'est une ours. If you want to talk, give the baby with the carriage to someone else. Farapont, take the carriage from the master. Yes, ma'am. I was speaking quite quietly. The posture. Phobic! Not any phobic! Little rascal! <laughs> huh? Very well, then. I will sign what needs signing, and I will give the document so you can give them to the committee tomorrow. Phobic? What is mommy's name? Darling! Darling! <laughs> oh, and who is this? This is Auntie Olya. Say good morning, Olya. <laughs> Bubik, you get back here, you little rascal. Our garden is like a public passageway. People walk and drive through. Uh, Yerisha. Oh, my darling. Oh, let me tell you, I'm having the time of it. I'm living in the government apartment in the high school with darling Olyusha. It's what the good Lord provided for me in my old age. <laughs> I've never lived so well. A simple woman that I am. It's a big flat. I have a room to myself and a bed of my own. Oh, I wake up at night and I, I, I say, uh, oh, we Mary, Mother of God, there's no one happier. I must be going, Olga Sergeyevna. Mm -hmm. I wish you every, every, where is Maria Sergeyevna? Oh. I'll go look for her. If you don't mind, I'm in a hurry. I'll go too. Oh, go. Everything comes Masha. to an end. Here we are parting. Masha. The town has given us a farewell lunch. Marusha. We were drinking champagne. The mayor made a speech. I ate and listened, but my heart was here with you all. I've grown used to you. Shall we never see each other again? Most likely not. My wife and two little girls will stay here, please. If anything should happen to me, or if they need anything. Yes. Yes, of course. Set your mind at rest. By tomorrow, there won't be a soldier in the town. It'll all become just a memory. And of course, for us, it'll be like starting a new life. Nothing turns out as we would want it. I didn't want to be a principal, and yet I am. Seems we were not meant to live in Moscow. Well, thank you for everything. Forgive me if anything was amiss. I I've talked a great deal. Forgive me for that, too. Don't think too badly of me. Why doesn't Masha come? Oh, 
What else am I to say to you as we part? What else am I to philosophize about? Life is hard. To many of us it seems dull and useless. Yet we must admit that lately it is becoming clearer and freer. And the time will not be far off when it will be full of happiness. Humanity is searching for happiness, passionately, and of course it will find it. But if only it could find it quickly. But I really must leave. Oh, oh here she comes. Oh. Oh. I've come to say goodbye. Oh. Oh. Don't forget me. Write to me. Oh. Olga Sergeyevna, take her. I must leave. Please. Come. Masha, stop it, darling. Stop it. Never mind, let her cry. happy anyway. I'm not complaining. I, I don't say a word of blame. Here, boy, here's my witness. We will begin our old life again. And I won't say one word, not a hint. By the seashore, an oak tree green, upon that oak a chain of gold. Oh, I'm going mad. By the seashore, an oak tree green! Upon that oak, a chain of gold. There, there, Masha. <laughs> Calm yourself. <laughs> I'm not crying anymore. She's not crying. She's being good. By the seashore, an oak tree green. Upon that oak, a chain of gold. No, the cat is green. No, the oak is green. Oh, I'm mixing it up. Uh, uh, uh. My life is a failure. I want nothing now. Oh, oh calm down in a minute. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> what does the chain of gold mean? Why do these words keep haunting me? Oh, my, oh, my thoughts are all tangled up. Oh. Calm yourself. Masha. <sighs> Mashenka. a good girl. Let's go inside. Oh, I'm not going in there. I won't go in there again. But please, let's sit down, e even if we don't say anything. I am going away tomorrow, you know. <laughs> I took these uh, glasses and uh, false glasses and false mustache from a senior yesterday. <laughs> Just look. I look like Groucho Marx. Don't I? <laughs> Funny creatures, those kids. <laughs> you really do look like Groucho Marx. Yes. <laughs> Awfully like. <laughs> what? Conrad put a pump up with with Sofochka so that Andrei Sergeyevich can push Bobik's carriage. Oh, what a lot there is to do with children. <laughs> oh, Irina, you're leaving tomorrow. What a pity. Why not just stay another week? Ah! <laughs> you gave me such a fright. <sighs> I'm used to you. And do you suppose it will be easy for me to part with you? <laughs> I'll put Andre with his piano in your room. Let him pound away in there. <laughs> and so Fudgka will be in his room. Oh, adorable, delightful baby. Isn't she a good little girl? 
Today she looked at me with such eyes and said, Mama! 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 There she goes again. <laughs> They're leaving. Yes? Our friends are leaving us. Well, a bon voyage to them! We must go home. Where am I hiding coat? Uh, I, I took them in. I'll, I'll get them right away. Yes, now we can all go home. It's we'll time. What, what? What is it? What? I, I don't know how to say. It's so weird. It's such a business. I'm so worried. I'm so worn out. No, I can't say another word. Dude, it doesn't matter. What's happened? This is a terrible day. I don't know how to tell you, my precious. What is it? What is it, for God's sake, please? Aaron. He's just been killed in a fight. Listen to that band play. Our friends are gone. One of them is gone forever. And we are left here alone to begin our lives over again. We've got to live. We've got to live. Time will come when, when we shall know what all of this is for. Why there is this suffering, this misery, and there will be no more mysteries. But first, we've got to live. We've got to live and only to work. Only to work. Tomorrow I will go to the school and I will dedicate my life to all of those who need me. It's autumn here now, but soon it'll be winter and we will be covered with snow and, and I will work. I will work. The music is so happy, so confident, full of longing for life. Oh my God. We will go away. Forever, and we shall be forgotten. Our faces will be forgotten, our voices will be forgotten, how many there were of us. But our sufferings will pass into joy for those who will live after us, and happiness and peace will be established upon earth, and they will remember kindly and bless those who have lived before. My dear sisters, our life is not over yet. We shall live. The music is so happy, so joyful. And it seems that in a little while, we will know why we are suffering. If we only knew. If we only knew. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We only knew. If we only knew. <laughs>